Whatever happened to that Benny Lewis guy? Some of you may have known me from my intensive three-month language missions, or my books, my blog, my videos, or some other work, but you've likely only seen that stuff years ago. Today I'm going to share with you why you haven't heard much from me in recent years in a very personal update. This video is for the context around the theme I'll be covering in upcoming videos, where I'll share how I worked through these major life challenges. So while this time I don't have any actionable advice, I will soon. And this particular update is an important part of my story, opening up and being vulnerable about some uh, pretty big challenges that I wanted to share first. By the way, this actually has nothing to do with the dumpster fire that is 2020. My personal rock bottom was actually 2018. Fortunately, things have been seriously turning around for me lately. So as miserable as everything I've been through is, I can learn a lot of lessons from all of this, maybe grow as a person to be stronger moving forward, and hopefully use this platform to encourage others who themselves may be struggling. Burnout. The first thing that happened, which was less serious than the other things I'm about to mention, but a big catalyst in causing everything else, was that I burnt myself out more than I ever imagined possible. I took on the most ridiculous work project of my life, writing four academic books simultaneously. This was about a year and a half of work so intensive that I neglected my core business. It was immediately after and right before other intensive projects, so I had no recovery period. I was only getting about two hours sleep for several months in this process every night, and the worst part of it was that it included a big learning curve for me compared to the non-academic work I had done before. So I actually spent most of that year and a half feeling like a complete failure, no matter how hard I worked. That was years ago, but I'm still recovering from it to this day, and I haven't really been able to focus on work quite the same ever since. It also created some serious self-esteem issues that I mostly ignored only until recently, which planted the seed for some other huge problems. Debt. The next big problem I've been dealing with was very poor financial planning. As bad an idea that taking on so much work with those books was, if I had gone to a cheap cabin in the mountains or something to do it, it would have been a damn sight better than moving to downtown Manhattan right as I started them. I was staying in the most expensive places I've ever lived in in my entire life. They were tiny and I actually really hated them. I never felt at home at all in these places. I had so much work that I never even left those small apartments with the crappy views and constant noise from the traffic to even go out and appreciate New York. And one way that I dealt with the stress was to order food delivered all the time and to splash out on expensive things as a distraction. I burned through all my life savings and I needed to take out loans and keep dangerously close to my credit card maximum limits all the time. When the book writing project was finally done, I had an extravagant wedding to plan with a lot of unnecessary expenses. After this, I stayed in the New York area for several years, still wasting a lot of money to be in a city I never truly got to appreciate because I didn't have the energy to. And since I was burnt out, the time away from my core business was followed by time not being able to give it my all, which is why I never really got back to making content like I used to. But this meant that, as well as my personal debt growing, my company suffered financially too. I'll be forever appreciative to my team who stuck through very tough times because they were the ones keeping Fluent in three months alive when I couldn't. Fortunately, I've been able to turn things around, both in my personal and company finances, and I'll talk about that in a future video. Also, I moved to Austin, which is much cheaper and less stressful to live in than New York. Divorce. So, guess who became a statistic? 
Lauren and I are divorced. The lucky part is that there was no infidelity or abuse and it was a mutual decision and no children were involved. Serious personality clashes that we had ignored in the first years, combined with life getting more difficult, had shone a light on issues we were never going to be able to solve. Being stuck in a tiny apartment and working on the academic books intimately together accelerated how aware of these clashes we were starting to become. We both truly loved the other person, but we were toxic for one another. We both thought we could eventually solve these problems, which is why we went ahead with the wedding. But even many couples therapy sessions combined with that couldn't help us, and we eventually had to part ways. The divorce itself was just a legal process that happened this year, and the separation at the end of 2018 was the right choice. But the part that really hurt was um, watching a love that I truly thought would be there for the rest of my life very slowly die right in front of my eyes. It's the most heartbreaking thing I think I'll ever experience in my life. We ended on friendly terms, but we cut off almost all communication for a clean break, and this dramatic change has made it so I'm, I'm dealing with this weird grief in all this time, like the most important person in my life suddenly died, even though she's fine, and even though I've moved on from her being my life partner. I'm still dealing with that grief and sadness from so many regrets to this day, but I am definitely a lot more comfortable in my current situation now, and I'm relieved that I, I do get this fresh start. I've had some time to heal, which has been the most important thing that I've needed more than anything. Four, depression. This one was hard for me to recognize because I pride myself in being an optimist who always tries to see the silver lining in situations. Ironically, my generally positive personality made me ignore this for much longer than I should have. But I think I presented enough context to make it clear that this wasn't really about me feeling a little blue. Dealing with crushing death, failing to keep love alive, my ego taking serious blows from feeling like a failure every single day I was writing the four books, and being exhausted from all of it, meant that I had reached a very, very low point psychologically. I had a professional assess me for clinical depression, and I was given medication to help me deal with it. I have mixed feelings about that solution, but I was at the strongest dose when Lauren and I decided to separate, which ended up being a very big help since I didn't feel nearly as miserable as I could have at that time thanks to it. It kind of dulled the pain of that transition. But I also spent most of last year trying to get off that medication because it made me feel a lack of interest in anything. And that was its own separate struggle. Fortunately, I had professional supervision to help me get to a safer place. And if any of you think you might be suffering from depression too, please talk to a professional, or at least confide in the people who care about you. Part of the process can be very, very frustrating, but I'm very glad I was able to get help to work through the worst of it. I'm actually dealing with the feelings that got me down in the first place, and I've recognized the importance of honest and open communication, which is the reason I'm sharing all of this with the world. I can still be true to my optimistic natural personality while also not forcing a brave face for the sake of, for lack of a better term, toxic positivity. And that's my story. There are other challenges I've faced in these years too, like obviously putting on weight, having my residential status put in doubt at a time I wasn't up for moving my entire life to another country, and some other things. I haven't completely solved or gotten over everything I mentioned today, but I am, at least, safely on the road to recovery. I know 2020 has been a really rough year for many people, so I by no means think I've had a harder life than other people. This is just my story, since I wanted to be open about the struggles that I've been through. Please go easy on me in the comments because I've had to work up a lot of courage and motivation to be able to 
record and post this video. And I actually wanted to do this a whole year ago, but I recognized that I was still too far from a place to talk about these things publicly back then. And I feel like I am ready now. And like I said, in upcoming videos, I'm going to talk about the specific challenges in more depth and discuss how I've worked through these issues, in case any of you might find that helpful. So um, to make sure you don't miss those, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And um, I'm also posting a lot more regularly again on my other social media. So you can catch me there too if you want. Hopefully this is the first of many more consistent videos you'll see on this channel, both to address the lessons I've learned from this experience, but also, of course, to get back to the content that I used to enjoy making previously that a lot of you probably subscribed for in the first place. So until then, thanks so much for watching and take care of yourselves.